how about taking a trip through Disneyland? You mean it? Sure. Come on. Once you step through Disneyland's main gates, you find yourself in the happiest place on Earth. I think Mickey wants us to take everyone to Main Street. Excellent idea. Main Street, USA is the perfect starting point for our Grand Circle Tour. Let's board one of the turn-of-the-century vehicles found in this area of the park. There are also fire engines, double-decker buses, and horse-drawn trolleys. We pass the Walt Disney Story. The Manhattan. And the American Egg House, where a wide variety of omelets are made in view of the guest. But onward, because there's lots more of Main Street to visit, including a variety of shops and exhibits. And the charm of the 1890s is with us wherever we go. Quaint shops of all kinds can be found throughout Disneyland. It's fun looking for souvenirs. And it's fascinating to see the variety of Disneyana from around the world. You can see all sorts of entertainment almost everywhere you turn. Each land has its own variety of entertainment, so there's always plenty of action between attractions. You're getting good at this. I'm learning. Where to first? Well, it looks as though this little girl wants her balloon to have a few adventures of its own. Let's follow along. First stop, Adventureland and the Tiki Garden. Aboard one of the river boats, guests explore the dangerous waters of the Amazon. Is it safe? Well, yes, except for snakes, spiders, alligators, rhinos, lions, and a few gorillas. Uh, I'll hold your hand if you like. <laughs> you sure. You didn't mention the tigers. I forgot. <laughs> I, I forgot to mention the head hunters, too. They take people's heads? They buy them, actually. But now it's time to follow our guide next door. To a swashbuckling adventure, if ever there was one. Once inside, we board vessels that take us to a port that's under attack by pirates. Will we make it without being caught? 
as easily as one, two, three. One, two, three. These French Quarter streets authentically capture the elegance and zest of Louisiana's mid-19th century. Huh? Now it's like being back in New Orleans in the good old days. Oh. The streets are lined with all sorts of wonderful little shops. And the detail of the buildings is definitely worth stopping to investigate. Especially. But here, there's something for everyone. Oh, looks like it's time to move on. We'll wait till you see where we're going. Around the bend and up the walk is... The Haunted Mansion? But, but, inside are 999 gold. Well, if the balloon isn't afraid, why should you be? Because inside are 999 gold. Well, don't worry. I'll protect you. You promise? Well, unless the ghosts get me. Uh... Oh, just kidding. Right next door is bear country. Thank heavens. Nestled in these woods is the country bear jamboree. Inside is a whole barn load of bears. That's right. Henry is the leader. Terrence sings up a storm and plays terrific guitar. Zeb's the fiddle player. He grins and plays and just barely makes it to the end of his piece. Barely? Cute. I thought so. Personally, Liverlips McGraw is one of my favorites. Everything he does in this show is funny. I like hearing Henry and his little friend sing David Crockett and other favorites. Me too. But you know who's my very favorite? Yeah. Who? Big Ed. Singing cowboy laments in the most unique fashion ever sung by a bear. Any singing bear is pretty unique. There's a lot to see outside in bear country, too. That's right, like the mile-long bar. The little restaurant was given its name because it appears to be endlessly long. The 1894 train is no toy. Steam-powered, it circles Disneyland and provides guests with a relaxing way to see the sights. And upward. 
we pass the Columbia, a full-size replica of the original Columbia ship. From here, we sail the rivers of America and pass countryside akin to that of America's historic past. These rafts take us across to Tom Sawyer's Island. Appears to be the direction in which our friend's going, too. Let's follow along. Fort Wilderness is a fort built just like those once used by the U.S. Cavalry. It's a great place to play. In addition to exhibits that make you feel as though you've stepped back in time. There are lots of rooms and paths to explore. Look what's coming up the river. It's Mark Twain. Oh, boy. Now it's time once again to cross the river and continue our tour. Across the way is Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Looks quiet and calm. Looks that way, doesn't it? But once you board the railroad, it starts to look a whole lot different. Uh, uh... Just remember to hold on tight as you ride this runaway mine train. Runaway mine train? Oh, I forgot to mention that too, huh? There's someone here in Frontierland I'll bet you'd like to greet. Who? The one and only... Mickey Mouse! He sure gets around. He may be the boss, but he sure likes to keep in touch. Now we follow our friend back along the path to the Riverbell Terrace Restaurant. Those pancakes sure look familiar. Did you know there are more than 55 places to eat at Disneyland? That's sure a lot. Something for everyone's tastes. Look, it's the balloon and the little girl. Looks like they're both heading to Fantasyland. A place where anything is possible. Storybook Land where we enter a miniature world after being swallowed by Monstro the Whale. The Casey Jr. train offers guests another view of these storybook settings. There's no place like Fantasyland. And it's getting better all the time. Thank you. 
bobsled's whiskers up, around, and into the mountain, complete with its own snow monster that roams within the dark ice caves. I wish you hadn't said that. Our final Fantasyland destination is the It's a Small World attraction. Inside are more than 300 singing and dancing dolls. They're all audio and a, a, a truck. Well, what you mean is audio animatronic. Right. In this case, it means they span the world with music and song. years of planning and creating. But even before the first drawing, there was Walt Disney's dream. Well, it came about when my daughters were very young and I felt that there should be something built where that the parents and the children could uh, have fun together. I started with many ideas, threw them away, started all over again. And eventually it evolved into what you see today as Disneyland. But it all started from a daddy with two daughters wondering where he could take them, where he could have a little fun with them, too. Though Walt Disney's talents had established him as a leader in the film industry, it was nearly impossible to raise the money to finance such a novel form of entertainment. Disneyland was soon referred to by many as Walt's Folly. But being Walt Disney, he managed to raise the needed funds, largely in the form of personal loans, from dream to reality, there was the involvement of artists, writers, engineers, and architects. The people Walt Disney called Imagineers. Concepts were created, altered, and improved to breathe life into fantasy. For example, a mock Peter Pan became a more practical flying boat. Once the Imagineers had a drawing they liked, the model shop built a replica. When that was approved, it was full speed ahead. of work to do, but that was no problem, with a little help from Disney magic. 
<laughs> and the final touch, the brass ball high atop the Disneyland flagpole. Through this historic television footage, we're able to join the opening day celebration exactly a year and one day after Disneyland was no more than a drawing on paper. I remember when we opened, we didn't have enough money to finish the, the landscaping, and I had Latin uh, tags on all of the weeds. Whether ready or not, Disneyland was a fantastic success. The festive feeling of opening day has always stayed at Disneyland, where every year has brought something new and exciting. Here, children from all corners of the world add water from their countries to the It's a Small World Canal at its opening ceremony. And as with Fantasyland, all of Disneyland is constantly growing and improving. Here in Tomorrowland, Autopia offers guests a chance to test their driving skills. Goofy's driving? I'd cover my eyes too. How bad a driver can he be? Oh, I see. Look, it's the monorail. It passes through most of Tomorrowland. You'll see the revolutionary people mover through this land, too. We made it back in one piece. Now we're skyward bound. Below us are the submarines that take guests 20,000 leagues under the sea. Wow! Now, into the delightful America Sings. Can I tell about this one? Go right ahead. These two fellows take us on a trip through America's musical past. How am I doing? So far, so good. We start in the early South with a whole bunch of great songs. A whole bunch of great songs? Yeah! You mean like uh, Dixie, uh, Little Liza Jane, Camp Town Races, and My Old Kentucky Home? Yeah, that's right. Then, we moved to the Old West. Right. I mean, we really moved. In this special theater, the whole building turned, moving us from one state to another. Next stop, the Gay 90s, with another medley of great songs. Such as? Uh, you know. The Bowery, After the Ball is Over, Bill Bailey, Wandering Boy, Sweet Adeline, The Old Gray Mare, She May Be Somebody's Mother. Who? Who what? Who May Be Somebody's Mother? That's the name of the song. Oh. Anyway, this section wraps up with ta ra ra boom dee ta ra ra boom dee That's fun to say. ta ra ra boom dee ta ra it's, it's really time to move on. Oh, okay. Now we're back in the modern time. With songs like A Tisk of the Tasket, Boo Hoo, Jada, and Singing in the Rain. Gee, that doesn't sound like modern times. That's just because you're too young to know any better. Guests will always hear Hound Dog. See you later, alligator. Shake, rattle, and roll. Twist in USA. And joy to the world. All sung in ways you'll never forget. Next door is Space Mountain. Ooh, I like Space Mountain. It's like flying through the cosmos in a rocket. Well said. What's a cosmos? Just read the script. Now we arrive back in Main Street where we meet our friends again. Looks like they've had quite a day in the park, too. 
I kind of miss the yellow balloon though. Hey, what's she looking at? Oh, wow! There must be hundreds of them. I've always heard that Disneyland is a magical place. And what's this? It's the girl's balloon. It's coming back to her. Wow, look. Can we come back again? Of course we can. And each time it'll seem as fresh and as amazing as ever. Because it really is the happiest place on earth.